This is the video I hope to show my parents like 19 years ago. Someone needs to make the first step. So I hope I will get this right for my younger me about this size. Hi, this is Mark, longtime spider keeper and enthusiast. And since you clicked on this video, I suppose you are confronted with a very tough pill to swallow. Your child wants a tarantula. And since you're watching this video, I think it is really great that you are trying to gather the necessary knowledge before giving a final decision. And instead of just saying no. With that said, I would like to give you the basic infos so that you can make a decision if those animals are suitable for your child as a pet especially that you will probably be also involved in the care for those animals in some way or another and who knows maybe the appreciation and fascination for exotic pets will also be a bigger part in your life i know the topic pets for children is highly discussed and there are people leaning to both sides there are some benefits and there are some potential risks, especially with tarantulas and some other exotic pets. But this doesn't change the fact that people will keep pets and among those people are children. And sometimes they are keeping those animals very successfully. And like any other animal, tarantulas can give a lot of joy to their new keepers. Tarantulas, like any other pets, are living creatures and they require a certain amount of attention each week. The time and financial investment in them is exponentially lower than with dogs, cats, fishes or rats. Nonetheless, there are responsibilities, sometimes troublesome moments and to some extent even potential dangers. But to be honest, nothing extreme. There are potentially more harmful animals kept commonly in households right now, maybe even at your home. If taken seriously with some common sense and a healthy dose of respect, those animals can be a fantastic introduction to exotic pets. They don't require much attention and much equipment, but yet they are enshrouded by fear. Fear that is in most cases irrational and one of the biggest ones is the fear of getting bitten. Tarantulas are venomous, they cannot be tamed, they cannot have their venom glands or fangs removed. I've heard of such practices on the World Wide Web. I'm not sure if they are true, but if they are true, they are nothing less than animal cruelty, since you are disabling the tarantula from catching their prey. So by removing their fangs, you're basically sentencing the tarantula to death by starvation. Getting bitten by a tarantula, especially among those beginner species, is rarely a product of aggression from the tarantula's side. It's more connected with lack of respect towards the wild nature of the exotic pet. Even the tamest tarantula could misinterpret the vibrations caused by a finger as a cricket or roach. Bites can also happen out of self-defense. If you, for example, squishing the tarantula. I mean, accidents happen like in any other hobby, but bites are pretty rare. They are most often part if you are doing stuff in a hurry, but if this is your first spider and your only spider, you will be extra careful when you're doing stuff inside the enclosure. So I wouldn't worry so much. Okay, I will do something that I should not do, but we don't fear spiders here. Will you be a nice spider? You are, right? You are a nice, happy, happy spider. Okay. Normally I don't do this, but I just want to prove a point here. So let's talk about the topic of handling a tarantula. There are a lot of videos on YouTube where people are handling their spiders 
And as you can see, this is possible. Although, besides the cool and edgy factor, we as keepers don't get anything out of it and the spider is pretty stressed since it feels my sweats, my heartbeat and everything and it knows that it is on a living thing and the spider don't know that I won't hurt it. There's also a risk of getting bitten and in case of newer tarantulas to be bombarded with, with urticating hairs. The spider is also at risk since it could fall down from this table, it could hurt itself or even die. Tarantulas are pretty fragile. This is such a rare thing that I am holding a big spider. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, I know, it's warm, the hand is warm, but go, go. You've been a wonderful guest. Thank you for your cooperation. So, let's pretend it happened. You got bitten. The strength of the venom can reach from weak to strong, depending from species to species. But a strong indicator about the venom's potency is the region where the species originates from. Newer species, like this Aphonopelma calcodes or Arizona blonde tarantula, are having a weak venom. They are compensating this with urticating hairs, which they are kicking out into the air when threatened. Those hairs fly around and when they get into contact with your skin, it itches like nettles. If they get into contact with your eyes, well, this can be potentially dangerous. So if you are seeing that the tarantula is kicking hairs, lean back, wait for them to fall down to the floor or to the, on the table, take like a kitchen tissue, a wet, kitchen, a wet kitchen tissue and wipe everything clean and then you are good to go. Some people are also using gloves like regular latex or rubber gloves so they don't get into contact with those urticating hairs when working with the enclosure or with the spider in some way. Old world species like this Pelinobius muticus or king baboon tarantula rely on their highly potent venom. They don't have urticating hairs. Those species come from Africa and from Asia. And I know that some of them have beautiful coloration like the Pterinochilus murinus, the infamous OBT, or the Pezzilotheria metallica with their blue coloration. But if this is your first tarantula, start with something simpler, something not so risky. Even amongst the most venomous tarantulas, not even one death was recorded amongst healthy adults. The same cannot be said about dogs, which bites kill dozens of people every year. But this doesn't prevent a family to get a dog right. A bite from a newer tarantula will be probably painful since your body is damaged and those fangs are pretty long. And there is the venom. Some people compare the strength of this venom with a bee or wasp sting. Although we need to keep in mind that bodies of children are weaker than those of healthy adults. Technically, with those tarantulas, the biggest threat is an allergic reaction to the venom. Luckily, I haven't heard of such cases, so maybe they are super rare. I would be more worried about the spider walking on the ground, so after a bite, you could technically get tetanus. But this could also happen if you fall to the ground, you break your skin barrier and pathogens are entering your body. In my 19 year long spider keeping career, I haven't been bitten even once. I got my first spider when I was like this big, this big. <laughs> and I kept, fed and rehoused the spider all on my own. A lovely pet, Lasiodora Parahebana, which lived for nearly 16 years. It was wild sometimes, she was absolutely crazy, but still, it was manageable. You can see two specimens of the species right here. 
A few words about the care for those animals since this seemed to confuse a lot of new keepers. Basically you need an enclosure that's like twice the size of the spider, at least the leg span. You need a water dish and sometimes you are misting the enclosure so the humidity will go up. The enclosure needs a height where the spider will feel protected and the spider needs food. That's all the basic needs. All the decorations are basically for us. The spider doesn't get anything from it. So yeah, maybe we'll get more into detail about the most important thing. Food. As mentioned earlier, tarantulas are carnivores and their most important prey items are insects and other invertebrates like roaches, crickets and mealworms. Technically, tarantulas can also scavenge hunt. Although we as spider keepers are practicing that only with small tarantula slings or spider links since they are so small that those prey items could hurt them, for example, after a molt. With big spiders, it is definitely better to feed with living insects since the primary sensory organ of a tarantula, those aren't the eyes, it's the hairs. Those hairs sense subtle vibrations in the ground with which they locate and overwhelm the prey. Feeding adult tarantulas with mice, rats and other vertebrates is considered animal cruelty and is not condoned by most keepers. As a matter of fact, those animals could hurt your spider, so don't. So what's the life expectancy amongst tarantulas? The males live shorter, about two years, and depending on species to species, the life expectancy of females is between 8 to even 30 years, so take that into consideration when you are picking your first tarantula. A strong suggestion from me, don't get an adult male. They will be constantly on the move, they will refuse to eat and they will be searching for a potential mate. And after that, after about half a year, they will wither away, which is a sad sight, even kind of depressing. The wisest move from an observational and taking care kind of view is to get a juvenile. They are way past their most fragile age and they still have a lot of life ahead. So you will have plenty of time to observe your new eight-legged friend. And observing them is what's most important for me. I mean they are imposing looking spiders pretty big, colorful and with interesting behaviors. And I know that the amount of genera and species can be overwhelming in the beginning. So let me give you a few genera that you should take a look. Prachypelma, Gramostola, Acanthoscuria, Chromatopelma, Afonopelma, Lasiodora of course. Genera that are a bit more challenging, but also suitable in my opinion, are Avicularias, Caribenas and even Psalmopeus. I'll try to make genus summaries for beginners in the future. I even did one for the Brachypelmas. Pau. So, what if you're convinced that an arachnid, a spider, isn't for your child? Are there any alternatives? First of all, thank you for listening to this short summary. It means a lot to me since I will always try to spread my love for exotic pets. With that said, I would like to give you some nice alternatives to tarantulas. First of all, there are mantids. Mantids are amazing insects. They do not have venom, but they are carnivorous. They are a bit trickier. They need a bit more maintenance than tarantulas, but they can make fantastic animals. My first exotic pet was a mantid, uh, Svodromantis viridis. The second one is of course ant keeping. Ant keeping is really popular, there are whole YouTube channels dedicated to it and I would really love to give it another shot. I wasn't able to raise a whole colony, I tried it, it's really hard for me, especially if you are starting from just one queen. So hopefully I could give you some valuable information about tarantulas. If you are still concerned or you have any 
questions, feel free to ask me on Facebook. I highly value that you are taking your time gathering the necessary knowledge before you're making your final decision. I mean, this is the whole reason why I started this channel, to share my experience and knowledge after all. With that said, I hope you will give your child and yourself a chance to immerse in this fantastic hobby. There's a lot to discover and to observe. If you like what you saw and don't want to miss the next genus summary for beginners, consider subscribing, ring the bell, leave a comment what you like, what you want to see in future videos and as always, thank you for watching. Tarantuhala out.